Okay, thanks again for joining us today, everyone. I'm Christy Giuliano, Executive Director of the Big Cities Health Coalition. Uh, BCHC, as, as we abbreviate it, is a forum for leaders of America's largest metropolitan health departments to exchange strategies and jointly address issues to promote and protect the health and safety of the nearly 62 million people they serve. Together, these public health departments directly affect the health and well being of about one in five Americans. The Big Cities Health Inventory, um, the data platform that we're going to share with you today, has been around for close to 20 years in various iterations. It was initially developed by big city uh, epidemiologists who, pu who published chart books on a somewhat regular basis to share information with their peers in other jurisdictions. In 2015, we at the coalition launched um, the health inventory as an online platform with funding from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Recently, we partnered with the Drexel Urban Health Collaborative at the Dornsife School of Public Health. Uh, the Urban Health Collaborative was created to leverage the power of data, research, education, and partnerships in order to make cities healthier, more equitable, and environmentally sustainable. The relaunched data platform and today's webinar are one of the many results of this ongoing partnership. Shortly, we'll discuss a few key features of the data platform, uh, which you can find at bigcitieshealthdata.org. And um, my colleague Max has dropped that address in the chat. Uh, so feel free to open it up and follow along. I would be remiss uh, to not recognize our funding partners for the health inventory. The platform is primarily supported by the CDC through our cooperative agreement with the National Association of County and City Health Officials, or NHO. Um, BCHC staff time is supported by the DeBeaumont Foundation and other health philanthropies, though the views expressed here do not necessarily reflect, reflect the views of the CDC or our foundation funders. So now that we've gotten all that out of the way, um, we'll talk a little bit more about this over the course of the next hour, but really important is that data are needed at the local level, and in our case, not just the county level, but the city level. And that's one of the things that sets our data platform um, aside from others. Viewing trends at the local municipal level help inform policy decisions and can identify what's working and what's not. So let's jump in. Um, if questions arise throughout our conversation, feel free to use the Q&A and we'll get to them at the end. With that, I'll turn it over to Katie Livingood to start walking us through the platform. Thank you, Chrissy, for that introduction. My name is Katie Livingood. I'm the Assistant Director at the Drexel Urban Health Collaborative, where I oversee our research center's operations and activities. I'm also the project manager lead for the BCHI uh, data platform project. So as Chrissy mentioned, the Drexel Urban Health Collaborative, or UHC for short, is a research and practice center at the Dornsife School of Public Health that is partnered with the Big Cities Health Coalition to support the coalition, coalition's vision of healthy, more equitable cities. At the UHC, we believe in the power of data to motivate and support action. Our research and data team compiles data local to us in Philadelphia, for cities across the nation, and as shown here today, um, as well as across the, the globe. The collaborative uses this data to describe urban health and identify opportunities for action. Through three areas of emphasis, research and data, training, and community and policy engagement, we aim to advance knowledge, build capacity, and translate the knowledge into community and policy actions to improve urban health. So we are thrilled to partner with BCHC to develop and relaunch the Big Cities Health Inventory Data Platform. And I should note that this work to compile and present the data in the platform was made possible by our fabulous team, um, the contributions of the team members shown here, as well on this slide. Um, as well as others at the collaborative. And so from our team, I would like to introduce um, first Amy Auchincloss, the co-principal investigator on the project to talk more about the platform and its features. Thanks, my name is Amy Auchincloss. I'm epidemiologist at the Dornsey School of Public Health on the faculty here. So, let me make sure, there we go. 
So as Chrissy mentioned, this is an open access city level, primarily city level data platform that features data for the BCHC member cities. Currently there are 29 cities and they're listed here um, on the right. Currently the platform has over a hundred metrics with 11 categories that are shown here. A variety of topics are covered and we currently have over 100,000 data points. Metrics were chosen because of their public health relevance, specifically for CDC Healthy People, People's Goals and for providing um, benchmarks for new policy initiatives, as well as more broadly being able to highlight the demographic and socioeconomic disparities in health and in healthy environments. We are going to be adding um, more metrics on a monthly, pretty much on a monthly basis. So the highlights of the platform, they are only BCHC member areas. So those are currently 29 areas. The majority of data are city level versus county level that most uh, many platforms feature. The data are uniform and standardized across cities to allow for comparability. Most of our data are coming from federal sources and the data currently span uh, most, most of the metrics have 2010 to 2019. We'll be updating metric data as new, um, as data sources release new data. Other highlights of the platform, data visualizations. Um, users can view metrics as a single year in a cross section, or they can view them over time, as well as share web links that have pre-populated charts and also download the data, download all the line level data. The core functionality, I just want to quickly review before we get into the demo, just to orient you. So users can explore a big city, which means multiple looking at multiple metrics for a single city. They can compare cities, which means multiple metrics across cities. And they can view a metric, which means looking at a single metric in multiple ways for, uh, for a city. The features of the platform, we can, they, uh, users can group metric level data by race, ethnicity, by sex, and race, ethnicity, and sex, where the, if the data are available that way from this source, where we're getting the data from. And you'll see that there's an op option to um, pull down and group the data. If the option is grayed out, that means it's not available for that metric. We also provide a, a little bit of a city context. Uh, there's a short descriptor of city demographics on the Explore a Big City page that provides population size, poverty levels, and the race ethnic composition of the city. Users also have the ability to group cities in the graph according to the context of the city. So the region, poverty, population size, or population density. And you'll see there's a pull down menu for that as well when, when you are in a, the compare cities pages. So we'll turn this over to demonstrate the platform. Uh, Saima Niamatula. And I think you need to take yourself off mute. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Uh, th and good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I am Simon Yamatullah, and I'm the data analyst for the Big Cities Health uh, data, data Platform. And today I'm going to walk you through the main functionalities uh, of the platform. So this is the home page. You can start exploring the city data using the map here. The navigation bar is at the top. Uh, the main functionalities available are explore a big city, compare cities, and view a metric. First, I'm going to use the view a metrics page to demonstrate the different type of data available in the platform. 
So in the view a metrics page, we can view a single metric uh, for a single city in the different ways that the data are available in the platform. We have to, uh, first we have to choose a metric. We, so we have over a hundred metrics in the platform and these are given in a categorized list. And so I'm choosing prenatal care and we have to choose a city. Uh, I'm going to choose Houston. So from the charts, we can see uh, the data for a single metric over multiple years. The x-axis is the years. Um, for like Amy said, for most metrics, we have the data for 2010 to 2019. The second chart is the data for a single year. We also have the metric trends by race and also the metrics by race stratifications. So these are the basic ways that the data are visualized in the other pages in the platform. So I'm going to go over to the explore a big city page. First, we have to choose a city. Uh, I'll choose Houston again. In this page, we can see multiple metrics for a single city. So for Houston, we can add multiple metrics. I'll add prenatal care, low birth weight, and we can keep adding more metrics by hitting the add a metric button. Just 18 words. So <clears throat> the default is all years. Uh, we can see that for Houston, um, the the birth to teenage mothers has been decreasing over the years. We can also see the data for a single year by selecting a single year. For some uh, for some metrics, we have the data available by uh, subgroups. So the subgroups available are race, ethnicity, sex, or race, ethnicity, and sex. I'm going to show um, the low birth weight grouped by race. So here the users can, this allows the users to see the racial disparity in low birth weight. So this was uh, explore a city where we can see multiple metrics for a single city. We can also compare cities in the compare cities page. In this page, we have to add a primary city and add cities for comparison. We can add um, either single cities or all cities. Uh, we have to add the metric. So the data for uh, when we compare cities is uh, for a single year. So this is the prenatal care for 2019 for all cities. The y-axis are the cities. We also have a US total reference line for re comparison. To provide some city context, the cities can be grouped by, based on certain characteristics like uh, region, poverty, our population and density. So this is a comparison for prenatal care across all cities grouped by poverty. Uh, in this page too, we can add as many metrics as we want. I'm going to, so <clears throat> these are prenatal care and low birth weight side by side. So from here, we can see that overall, cities which tend to have a lower percent of women who seek uh, prenatal care in the first trimester also tend to have a higher proportion of low birth weight babies. In the compare city uh, cities page, we can also see the data stratified by race, uh, but it's only if a subset of cities is selected because it's very difficult to see all cities stratified by race. So in this page, I have selected a subgroup of cities and I'm going to show low birth weight stratified by race. So this allows the users to view the racial disparity in low birth weight uh, uh, compared when comparing multiple cities. And finally, I would like to show you the different ways that the data can be exported from this platform. So every chart can be downloaded using this button at the upper right corner. Users can also add multiple metrics and share their findings using by sharing their web links using the share button. 
The data of the platform can also be downloaded. The link to the download page is below. The about and the FAQ pages provide more information about uh, the metric and the sources. And in the FAQ, we have a technical documentation, which gives uh, details into the metric calculation. So this is a brief overview of, of using um, how we can use the data platform to explore cities. I hope you have fun exploring the, da the data and find this useful. Uh, now over to you, Chrissy. Thanks so much for that. Um, it was great to see it all up there and updated and all the or some of the things that we can do on the data platform. And I would again encourage folks to go to the website and play around um, and see what's there. And if you have you know questions as you're doing that come up, feel free to um, reach out to us. So um, I am going to bring Jen Colker into the conversation. Jen is the Associate Dean for Public Health Practice and Clinical Professor of Health Management and Policy at the Dorn Seif School of Public Health. Um, she leads our partnership uh, with folks at the Urban Health Collaborative, um, as well as other policy engagement activities. So hi, Jen. Hi. Um, so before before we jump in, I was going to answer one of the questions um, here in the chat about uh, big cities in the southeast quadrant of the country. Um, so that is true. We do not currently have many member cities um, in the southeast. We do have Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, the other cities are currently not large enough or um, are not independent health departments. So one of the membership criteria for BCHC is that we only have independent local health departments. So Miami, for example, um, is a state run health department. Um, Atlanta is kind of a funky situation, but it is not a totally independent health department. So that's why um, those cities are missing on the map. Um, we are hopeful that changes in the future, but, but we'll see um, where we land. So cities, Jen, why do we both work on public health? What, uh, urban health rather, what is it about cities would you say that are special and unique and, and why are these data important? Um, so gosh, there's so many reasons. And I, I, I should say I've worked in urban health and city health my, my entire career. Um, so obviously I think it's great because um, I've been doing this for a long time. But just to start, if you look at just the, the you know, Big Cities Health Coalition, one in five people in the United States, 20% live in a city represented by the Big Cities Health Coalition. That's a lot. That's a lot of people. And so that data is really reflecting a lot of what's going on in this country. We're seeing a trend both nationally and internationally towards urbanization. So really understanding what happens with cities, both what are the positive things that a city offers to people and what are the challenges that a city offers to people. And I just also think cities are, they're exciting places. There are so many different systems that interact with each other, public, private, that contribute to health, that it really is, it's its own, you know, microcosm of the greater world. So I think it just makes it a really exciting thing to study. I agree with you. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about the data. Um, who do you think can and should be using these data or the data uh, platform? Yeah, I mean, I think the data platform is really designed so it can be used by a lot of different people. So obviously we hope that people in the cities, um, in member cities, whether it's people in epidemiology units or someone in maternal child health or in the HIV and AIDS unit can look at the data themselves. But um, it's there's really a nice range depending on what different technical ability is. So researchers can use it. I know doctoral students in the past have really dug into it for their own types of research questions and research projects. Advocates, policymakers, you know, staff people for city council in different cities. So there's really a, a place for almost everybody to play with this data and, and get out of it what they need. So, you know, we I touched on this a little bit at the top and, you know, we talked just now a little bit about cities, but why is city level data in particular so important? So, you know, there's a there's a lot of data out there, right? There's national data, there's state data, there's a lot of county data. All of that data is important and there are fantastic dashboards out there. 
but cities tell a unique and different story. And the problem with only looking at county data, I mean, I'm lucky, I live in Philadelphia where the city and the county are the same thing. So we kind of dodge that problem. But if you can imagine if you're living in a major, in a city that's part of a much bigger county, county data is not gonna capture what's going on in your city. And so without really looking at cities themselves, you lose things in the process. And so by having a dashboard that is city level data, you can actually see what's going on in a city, but also cities can then compare e themselves to each other. And we can look at cities across the board. What is happening? What are trends in urban areas that we might not see if we go up to the county level? And I think that's true in a lot of our, our member jurisdictions. Um, you know, even though we are a coalition of cities, about half of our members are county health departments. And in some places, they get really, really rural really quickly. And so looking at differences across that jurisdiction may be important. Um, you know, and I think also, as you touched on, um, for policymakers sitting in the city. So if it's a mayor and a mayor's staff, in a city exactly. that maybe doesn't have direct um, authority over um, the health department, you know, he or she and their staff need that information as well. So, you know, we've really tried to make this platform um, in such a way that it, it can, as you said, I think, you know, speak to anybody's sort of technical abilities and look at different things. Mm -hmm. Um, we should also sort of plug that um, there are different visualizations that people can make and those can be exported um, and we'll be doing more of that collaboratively. So you should follow the Big Cities Health Coalition and the Urban Health Collaborative on Twitter um, so that you can see those things that we have coming forward. Um, so I think speaking of that, we're going to share an infographic now. Um, can I just jump in and just say yeah. one other thing, which is the other important thing and the other important reason I think to look at this and especially looking across cities and why cities is, you know, cities are doing really, do really interesting things. They do interesting policy level things. They do interesting programs. And it's really useful to kind of marry some of that interesting stuff that cities are doing with some of the data that backs up. Not that they're act, you know, experimentation or case controlled studies, but it's a really nice way to say whether it's across 30 cities or say, huh, these five cities have done these interesting things, whether it's around gun violence or beverage taxes or other policies that they have the ability to do. And let's get a little look at what the data may look like across the cities and see if there are some trends. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, for for those folks who are on the webinar who are um, members, you know, those are things that we can work on together. I think those are also, you know, for folks who aren't members, um, again, can look at, you know, fairly easily on the platform. Um, thanks for sharing that, Jen. I'm always happy to chat about cities with you. <laughs> um, talk about so, cities forever. I know, right? And we do that together. So um, with that, we'll show this infographic. Um, as, as Jen was sort of saying, you know, this is an example of um, what can be pulled from the platform. So using data from the platform um, and looking at BCHC member jurisdictions um, across healthy people 2030 goals, we, show, we have health insurance, prenatal care, and um, low birth weight baby statistics here. And we know this is really hard to see um so i think we'll go ahead and drop um, a link in the chat so that you can see the um the graphic specific uh, bigger but what we want to show is that again you can highlight data um, to assess progress relative to some of these national benchmarks um and then also again across big cities and think about how you can use that <coughs> excuse me, that data to spur action. Um, so again, we chose maternal and child health indicators here, uh, but it's really relatively easy to do that. Um, so we encourage you to do that, to take a look at the platform. Um, and I think we can put in the chat some contact info for folks at the Urban Health Collaborative and then also at BCHC. We really do want this platform to be a tool um, not just for our members, but for others, you know, who are working in policy and practice across the field. Um, that was always the intention, um, or at least our intention as we moved it online. Um, 
and we want to, you know, we want to work with others and, and partner with others. So feel free to reach out. Um, with that, I think we'll open it up to questions. I don't know if we want to take the slide down. And so I'm going to ask some questions of folks. And if there are other questions, um, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A. Um, so I think Amy touched on this a little bit, but let's regroup on how indicators have been selected and, and what we're thinking about moving forward. So I'm sure, Amy, you want to start with that? Sure. Is there a, was there, a, am I responding to a specific question or? How are, how are key indicators selected? Okay. Um, well, we began originally with the list that was historically part of the BCHC platform. Um, so, and then we built upon that, that the prior platform was primarily pulled together from data that was provided by the cities directly. So um, it was a unique, uh, a very unique data set. There were some issues around comparability, um, even with the best intentions, it is very difficult to have um, highly comparable data across nearly 30 cities. So that's why we ended up trying to find data ourselves that would be comparable to the indicators and the metrics that were in the original platform, as well as reduce the burden on the health departments for having to send us data. So we began with the original list and then we built off of that um, some of the data sources that we, when we went to uh, search for the, the old um, metrics, we saw that other data were available from that source. And then, you know, just even there's from the um, current events and news and new, new data sources that have been opened up, for example, the mapping police violence um, data. Um, we've added some more in some inequities data that we'll be adding more of. Um, so yeah, we're when we are happy to hear from you all too as to which if there's particular data sources that you think are comparable across a number of jurisdictions and could be added to the platform, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, thanks, Amy. And I would just reiterate that, you know, I, I, I sort of touched on briefly at the beginning that this has been an iterative process. You know, the uh, handful of big city EPIs started this. We took it on and tried to build out um, indicators that were relevant for healthy people. At that point, it was 2020, and here we are. Um, and then also for topics that were of interest in the coalition. So we do a lot of, we've been doing a lot of work on violence prevention and substance use disorder and things like that. So in addition to healthy people, what's available and comparable, which those of you who work on data and public health know that there's not a lot of compar comparable data available at the city level, but then also bringing in those key components. And I think, um, you know, what, what the Drexel team brings to that is, is really that they're seeped in these data and can be creative and figure out how we can pull these things in. And I think moving forward, you know, we'll think about, um, some more non-traditional, for lack of a better word, health data as we look at the bigger picture pieces of cities and all the things that we know affect um, health in cities. Just trying to scroll here to the um, questions. So um, can the data be downloaded? Or are they freely available? Um, you know, information on how we want people to cite the data, we should probably add to the, the FAQs or the methodology. That is a question. So that's a note we'll take back. But um, how can people use the data? Um, what's the easiest way to, to start to download it and then use it? I don't know, Amy or Katie, if you guys want to, one of you wants to handle that. Yeah, and um, Saima too. Um, yeah, there's so on the, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, they'll, you'll see a download button and that will take you to a page that where you have to just click um, read, read through the, <laughs> the uh, permission that you are agreeing to. Um, and then there's an opportunity to download it as a CSV or Excel file. That is the it's not the completely raw data but you'll see it's it's a 
it's not the most user, um, not all users are going to want to um, uh, wade through that, that file, but that file is available for folks that do want to play with data. And we should note for those of you who are epidemiologists, maybe your statisticians on the call, there are confidence intervals in that file um, when in the instances where we were able to calculate this, those. So particularly for the mortality and the natality data, there are confidence intervals that are shown that are available in the download that are not shown visually in the charts. Great, thank you. Um, so I have one more question here. If anybody has any questions, put them in um, the the question the Q and A box now, so we can make sure to get to it. Jen, you and I talked a little bit about this, but how can people and maybe let's broaden this out, not necessarily health departments or city staff, but how can people use data to try and advance the health of their communities? You know, and I think again, particularly if they're not inside, you know, advocates or, or people like that. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you saw the infographic that um, that Katie and Amy share. I mean, I think that's a perfect example. We're moving more and more to how do we make data easily digestible with pretty colors in ways that people can just see them and, and do something. And so I actually would encourage one other piece of feedback is like if if people see things through looking at this that they think would make a great cross city infographic, let us know. We can't promise we can do everything, but it, that would be great to know. But if people can start in your own cities and places using some of this data to create things like that, um, I think that's great. I, I'm a big believer in smaller pieces of dissemination and translation of data to decision makers and policymakers. So whether it's an infographic or a, a one or two pager or a policy brief, there's all sorts of materials that we know from legislators, policymakers, community leaders that they want data in digestible digestible formats and that's really what can really can really help make an impact um great thanks jen so there's one more question here um about covid19 data so we can plug another project that we have together and i'm i'm trying to google the address but of course i can't so we need to drop that into the yeah, chat um so there's a question about sharing covid19 data on um at the city level so we do have, um, with funding from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, uh, Drexel's Urban Health Collaborative with us at BCHC um, have launched a COVID-19 health and equities um, platform. So there are separate data there. Um, and again, one of us will Google quickly and get it in there. Um, Oh, there it is. Thank you, Katie. Um, and I think, you know, we've talked about moving forward, do some of those data move to this platform? Now, granted, they're, they're sort of a different indicator metric type. Um, you know, they're hopefully we won't continue to update cases and deaths in the near future. <laughs> um, one can hope. Um, so, you know, all that is to say, we've had some conversations about at, at what point do we move some of that data in? And I think, you know, it's still a question on the table. Did I, did I, anybody have anything else to add on that? Yeah, no, I, think I, think the only, I, I think the only, um, so for those of you that go to the platform, you'll see it's highly temporarily resolved. It goes, um, it's, you know, monthly data, whereas our platform is currently built out as an annual, annual summaries. So, um, but there are some summaries that we could annualize yeah. to, to display on our platform um, moving forward. The COVID platform is monthly, the other platform is annually. Our, not yeah. every city is included in the COVID dash. I mean, there's not every variable is considered. <clears throat> and I would also urge, especially for the epidemiologists and city folks on the call, like, I, I hope you'll find sort of the ways in which both this platform and the way which Amy and Seema have are demonstrating things and on the COVID platform that they give a little bit of maybe inspiration or ideas for how you may want to do data in your own cities. So that you look and go, oh, that's a really interesting framework for presenting health equity data. If you look at our, our COVID dashboard in particular, maybe that's something we want to try here. So the idea is also that this is uh, not just that we've got these great platforms, but that they give people some ideas um, and some ways of doing data maybe differently or adding on some new ideas at the city level. Great. Well, I think we've answered um, all the questions. Um, 
Thank you, um, Drexel team. You have made my life in particular much easier by taking on this project. Um, I tease that the first version of this platform was like birthing a third child. I only have two children, but this was a huge project. So we're so appreciative of the collaboration. Um, again, thank you to CDC and our other funders and to all of you who joined us today. We really appreciate the time that you've given us please do feel free to reach out to um, either either side of the partnership here and we'll make sure that your questions or comments are, are shared with whomever um, it needs to be shared with so thank you visit the platform use the platform um, have a wonderful holiday season whatever you celebrate and more importantly happy new year and um, we look forward to hearing from you thanks so much thanks everyone bye everyone